So every time I'd raise my hand and say, hey, we got a problem here, they would attack the messenger. And I got to go with the messenger. My mind fills up into a creature And it haunts me somewhere much deeper I got nightmares in my head I fear The thoughts build up until I can't hear That my mind fills up into a creature And it haunts me somewhere much deeper Hello, well, it's been a while, hasn't it? Welcome, welcome back to True Crime Rocket Science the most authentic voice in true crime. I hope you've all been doing okay while I've been away. Um, meanwhile, there has been some disturbing, shocking news on in terms of this whole Boeing saga. 62-year-old John Barnett, he was part of the Federal Aviation Administration's Whistleblower Protection Program, quite a mouthful, until recently he has actually died. He also appeared in the Netflix documentary Downfall. Do watch that if you haven't already. And, and in that, he uh, Boeing disavowed Barnett's comments in the film's final moments. Now, Barnett's family told NPR the case was heading to trial in June. So Boeing would essentially be facing a high-profile and high-publicity trial just you know two or three months from now. And Barnett, apparently, according to his family, was looking forward to having his day in court and hoped that it would force Boeing to change its culture. Well, it seems, given the latest events, Barnett found dead in his vehicle, an orange pickup truck in a hotel parking lot. It seems that he's changed his mind about wanting to hold Boeing to account and instead has held himself to account. Or not. Anyway, as we know and has been reported extensively in headlines since the 737 MAX disasters, Boeing has been accused of having a culture of concealment. What do you think? Is this, is Barnett's sudden death part of that culture? Is it part of that attempt to conceal? Or has Boeing magically changed its culture, just uh, decided to you know, turn a new leaf and in doing so kind of shot themselves in the foot in terms of this whole idea of profits above else. You know what? We're not going to try and make more money. Let's change our culture and lose even more money. Do you think they've decided to do that? In any event, before we get to the merits of this particular case, we're going to actually look at whether it is likely that Barnett took his own life or whether something else happened. If you haven't already subscribed to this channel, please do. You can see that this Boeing um, saga has got a lot of legs. There are a lot of incidents that are happening constantly. So if you're interested in this particular topic, please uh, like, share, leave a comment. If you really appreciate the, the content, you can hit the thanks button and let's get started. Now, according to a police incident report, Officers were dispatched to conduct a welfare check at a holiday inn in Charleston, short, that's uh, South Carolina, shortly before 10.20 a.m. on Saturday, so over the weekend. Now, although that was a weekend, he was due to give part three and the final part of a three-part deposition, and obviously he never made it. And so it was actually his own lawyer's who were waiting for him to pitch up, who called the Holiday Inn and asked where he was. And, and, and when they arrived, responding officers found Barnett in the driver's seat of a truck in the parking lot with a gunshot wound to the head. He was apparently holding a handgun when they found him. That's an important part to highlight. They find him and he's actually holding a handgun. Barnett was pronounced dead at the scene, according to police. The police report also said there was a piece of paper found next to him that looked like a note. Now, what do you think? It seems pretty cut and dried, right? He has a gun in his hand, a note beside him, and uh, what else could it be? Anyway, when asked for comment regarding Barnett's death, Boeing issued a statement. They said, we are saddened by Mr. Barnett's passing and our thoughts 
or with his family and friends. But uh, given what Barnett has put Boeing through, all the allegations, all the um, intel that he's shared with the media, do you think Boeing has really been saddened by this? Why would they be saddened if Barnett was such a thorn in their side? You know, is an insider with damaging inside information. Surely, if anything, Boeing stood to gain greatly from him simply disappearing from the scene, especially if he did so of his own accord. So why would they say they were sad? Uh, surely they are glad that this legal quagmire has simply been washed away. Now, although it seems that what, what has been reported is that the lawyers are going to continue fighting this case and I think it's going to be taken on behalf of his family or something like that. So that is certainly um, quite an interesting development. In any event, this does raise three serious questions. You know, was this murder or was it as it appears? And I think when we can deal with that through three serious questions, and they are, number one, gun found in his hand. Now, it may seem to make sense that someone who takes their own life will be found with a gun still in their hand. But if you really think about it, why wouldn't the gun fall out of their hand? Either at the moment the shot went off, you know, just fall out of the hand there, or once the hand holding it simply you know, fell limply at his side. You know, why would the gun still be in his, in his hand? Now, I suppose what we're wondering when we ask questions like this is whether the gun was planted and whether Barnett was forced to write the note. If a gun was planted, we may be dealing with a high-level hit, kind of a professional-type scenario. Also, did the hotel where he was found, a Holiday Inn in Charleston, have security cameras, any CCTV, and if so, did they capture anything? Number two, psychology. Rodney Barnett, John Barnett's brother, told the Associated Press that John was suffering from PTSD and anxiety. He was having anxiety attacks as a result of being subjected to the hostile work environment at Boeing. And he says, we believe that led to his death. Now, if you think about it, he retired in... 2017. So, you know, would he still be suffering the ill effects of that environment seven years later? I have my doubts. Of course, the, this prolonged uncertainty when it comes to litigation like this can be very stressful. But the bottom line is that this seems to suggest family members believe Barnett's death is as it, as it appears. And I think that raises the possibility that it wasn't murder significantly. You know, if his own family members think that that is what happened to him, then I think you know, they are in a way insiders into his morale, into his mood, into his temperament, into what was kind of going on. The real question here is, what was Barnett's state of mind? What was it really? And certainly based on recent images, to me he looks tired, to me he looks troubled, he looks kind of haggard. On the other hand, it seems unlikely that Barnett would choose to end his life in the middle of something that one would imagine that he was looking forward to, to finally have his say against the company he'd been battling against. You know, he was really reaching the finish line. One could also imagine the company, as I've said before, would benefit, if not directly profit, from Barnett's silence. So who had greater incentive in Barnett's silence? Barnett or Boeing? And then the final point, timing. On March 12, CNN published an article Boeing is in big trouble. Uh, just that's one article. There, there have been many, many other articles, and I haven't made YouTube videos on a lot of stories that uh, are very current. You know, uh, some serious additional bad press that, that, that has been taking place in terms of Boeing. And in terms of this article, Boeing is in big trouble. You can see just how the share price has been pummeled of late. 
And so, you know, from its tanking share price, currently trading lower than it did during COVID, you know, it's still not recovered from the free fall following the two back-to-back max crashes. You know, it's, the, the share price is really struggling. Boeing is clearly in trouble. That's just from the share price. News headlines coming in constantly since January have basically supported the same theme. Boeing is in trouble. And so wasn't Bonnet going to be the straw that broke the Dreamliners back during this critically sensitive time? You know, if Bonnet's trial was allowed to go forward, um, because there is kind of a sense that if there's one more serious incident, you know, is Boeing going to even survive as a company? And so, you know, we're seeing headlines from as recently as March 4th, just days before Bonnet's death, where passengers are even saying they're refusing to fly on Boeing's 737 MAX. You know, there's one article titled, I want to get off the plane, passengers refusing to fly on Boeing 737 MAX. One passenger who did this wasn't just like passengers who've heard things and have the kind of saying, I've got a bad feeling about this. It's one of them had worked for Boeing for 10 years including three years as a senior manager in production support. And actually, it worked on the 737 MAX project before its launch. And that should tell you something. That should tell you something about the timing of all of this, that right now you've got even Boeing employees that don't want to fly in Boeing. And so the global context in terms of the timeline is clearly a concern here, but so is the timeline on the day of the incident itself. It's strange to me that Barnett seems to have died on a Saturday morning. Did Barnett return to the hotel Friday night? Did he eat? Did he sleep? And then did he head to his truck, dress for his deposition only to change his mind while sitting in the truck? When did he actually die? Also, was the firearm his or was it registered to him? Was he dressed in fresh clothing? Had he changed clothes between the time that he arrived at the hotel parking lot and how he was found. Also, had he eaten breakfast? Had he communicated to his lawyers anything about his intention, what time he would see them that day, or or his eagerness to attend the third day of his deposition? The other contextually relevant thing to just think about is just the broad strokes of what was going on here. You know, Barnett is based in Louisiana, He was in South Carolina to offer evidence for legal proceedings linked to a defamation lawsuit against Boeing. So he was suing Boeing at the time that that this happened. And in his lawsuit, he claimed that Boeing deliberately hurt his career and reputation because of allegations that he'd made of grave safety uh, breaches on the aircraft's company's production line. And exactly that, the grave safety breaches are what are making headlines right now and and which the share price is very sensitive to. And so Barnett could hurt Boeing even more now by, you know, putting a magnifying glass to exactly this kind of thing. But I want to emphasize those words, deliberately hurt. He's basically was saying that Boeing deliberately hurt what? Well, his career and reputation. And if you look at those words, deliberately hurt, this idea that Boeing deliberately hurt a particular person in a particular way, isn't it possible that he was deliberately hurt in this instance, except more directly? In other words, deliberately hurt again, but this time in a completely different way. What do you guys think? I'm not going to take it further than that. I do want to follow this up with a... A uh, very interesting analysis of the skeleton coast, why it's such a deadly coastline for ships, not aeroplanes, but ships. And I was there recently and took some amazing photos, saw some amazing scenes that I'd love to share with you, but also share in the history of this very mystical and kind of haunting place. So look out for that. That might be coming out in the next couple of days. Thank you for listening, and I'll see you guys next time.